Okay, roofing part two. So here we're putting down waterproof asphalt felt right on top of the decking. Uh, we're doing this with a staple gun. And the purpose of this is that if water ever was to make its way down through the layers of the roof um, and get down to the asphalt felt, it's never going to, it's going to not penetrate past that. It's going to run down the roof and eventually make its way out of the roof. It's never going to penetrate into the ceiling of the house. So here's the asphalt felt completely done on the main roof, and we're starting to put our polyiso insulation on. Take notice that our layers of polyiso are staggered, so the seams are never on top of one another. So the roof's at a point now where we're, we're ready to put the, the final layer on, the, uh, the pro-panel uh, metal roofing. And that's going to be extremely nice because with all the rain we've been getting, every day we have to tarp the entire roof and it's always windy, and it's usually starting to rain already by the time we start to tarp it, so uh, it's been incredibly challenging, and we also have to throw up like 100 tires on the roof to hold down the tarps every day. So this is really special. Also, you can see our pro panel sitting over there, um, and uh, the other day we had some serious gusts of wind, and even with all those tires on it, the wind actually blew a couple of the sheets of pro panel up, and and bent it, and kind of kinked a couple of them, but we think we're going to be able to, to use them regardless. Just kind of dang out the kinks. So, you can see here, uh, these are uh, minus the pro panel roofing, the steel roofing on the top. Uh, we have all of our layers here. We got the Vegas, the 1x8 uh, pine decking, the asphalt felt right here, the uh, 8 inches of uh, Poly ISO insulation, and then we have our 1x4 per pine purlins and our uh, OSB uh, filler. So the 1x4 purlins are screwed down with 12 inch ISO screws. They go through the 8 inches of poly ISO insulation, the asphalt felt, into the 1x8 pine decking, and then into the Vegas. And they basically run across the entire roof and they hold down the insulation. Um, really tight against the roof. And then we have these uh, three quarter inch OSB uh, fillers here to fill the gap between the purlins. Because when we put our pro panel roofing on, they're gonna, the pro panel roofing is actually gonna secure into these purlins. And then when you step on the, the pro panel, you need these, this OSB filler in order, to, so, uh, in order to fill that void so you don't bend the, the, uh, the roofing. This detail here was unexpected. We didn't, uh, this kind of came after the fact, after we got our roofing on, we realized that our trusses were only 37 inches long from down there to here. And that was not enough space to put our solar panels. So we had to create these little triangular uh, like uh, pieces of wood here to, to extend this, uh, this surface so that we can get a full 48 inches to put our uh, our CDX plywood down and our one inches of uh, poly ISO on the front face. And that's what our solar panels are going to mount to. Now that we've extended it up, our solar panels have plenty of room uh, to be mounted on this front face. We also had to notch out our poly ISO insulation to accommodate these little uh, triangles and we also had to cut the poly ISO insulation at, at the same angle. Another thing that came up was <clears throat> the skylight vent box for the greenhouse and the battery systems box. First, my plan said they needed to be two feet wide and that was too narrow. Uh, I checked with uh, some crew guys and they, uh, they, they've made a change in the past uh, six months to make them wider. So now they're 31 inches wide. Uh, so we had to first make that change. And then, originally we had them further up on the trusses, only about an inch away from the crown of the trusses. Um, but then, once we got our poly ISO insulation up, and our roofing up, we realized that we needed that extended uh, extended front face there. So we had to actually cut insulation out the back of these boxes here and cut the decking out and actually move these boxes back and put more triangular pieces in there to extend that, extend that front face. So here we have uh, some three quarter inch uh, heat packs. It's PEX piping. Um, heat packs, it's, uh, it's rated something around uh, 200 degrees Fahrenheit at, uh, at like 100 PSI. And that's, that's going to allow us to run hot glycol from our uh, solar water heater um, in a closed loop out to the roof 
it actually comes in, it'll come in through a copper pipe through the gutters here, come out of the gutters and come into here. And then this runs three times across the width of the roof. You can see it runs down to the west, turns around, runs down to the east, and then turns around and run down, runs down to the west again. And then it comes out over here. And we actually uh, will come back into the house down there to close the loop. So we come out of the house here, go into the gutter, come all the way around, and then come back into the house down here. And uh, the purpose of this is to melt ice and snow off the back of the roof and in the gutters, to prevent ice damming, to make sure that we have a consistent melt um, after snows in the winter time, um, and we catch all that rainwater instead of uh, the water melting and falling off the side of the roof or going over the gutter because of ice and snow. So we just put this gutter on yesterday, and there's a few details here. One is the EPDM rubber, which I talked about in a previous video. I had uh, explained how we sandwich it between two plates of Trex on top of the bond beam. And if we actually take a look under the roof here, we can see that it's pulled up from, um, from back on the bond beam, up along the back of the roof here, up behind the gutter, and actually up on top of the roof. Um, this was, as I explained in that video, to prevent moisture and uh, water to wick up into, through the ground, because this is all going to be buried, to wick up into, from the ground into the vigas and rot them out. So here's our EPDM coming up onto the roof. This is all going to be covered uh, by, the propanol uh, by the propanol roofing. And this is 20, uh, I think 29 gauge uh, steel. It might be 26 gauge, I can't remember. But uh, the gutter comes in one piece, and it only comes in 12 foot sections, so we have overlaps. On every overlap, we rivet the pieces together, the two pieces of gutter together. That's what these are right here. And we also silicone them, silicone the, uh, the seam here to make it waterproof. That's all dry and waterproof now. We also just fabricate these little straps, just two, a two inch piece of flashing of the same type of material, fold it over and then bend it here and then secure it directly to the roof with, uh, with uh, roofing nails. And that gives it rigidity and strength. You can see this is pretty strong here. The, the east and the west side gutters slope inward towards the center and they dump water into a canale. And this is just a simple canale made out of uh, 2 by 12 pine. And uh, this is going to actually be flashed with the same type of metal here. And on the bottom we're going to have EPDM rubber to keep water from coming up into it and rotting this wood. And so the water comes in here, flows down the canale and just dumps right into the cistern. Right now I just have a piece of lath on top of the cistern entrance to keep animals out of there. But I am going to take the cap here. I'll take this cap. I'm going to cut a hole in the center. I'm going to take a five gallon bucket and have it sit in that hole. And put some holes in the sides of the bucket. So silt settles down to the bottom of the bucket. And then as the water rises in the bucket, it overflows into those holes and then drops into the cistern. Uh, that's a pretty inexpensive way to go about it. You can also use what's called a, a galvanized steel salad bowl that sits in the opening and has holes drilled in the bottom of it as well. But that's probably going to cost anywhere between $50 and $100, and this is going to cost about 5